Hello, a great welcome to the CTS on Abacus. Myself, Jaraj and P. This is part B of tutorial number two. The users are first requested to go through part A before viewing this part of the tutorial. Please note that the link for the playlist relevant Abacus tutorials is given under the description of video. This part essentially include running the analysis, discussion on a visualization module and finally the interpretation of results. So let me take you to the backers. So in part A we have generated a model database that is uh, ssbeam.ca. Now let us submit this job. Okay, it is asking uh, job file already exists. Okay, I have run it already. So let me just run, run it once again. Okay. So now you can start monitoring okay uh, all the analysis that is being carried out by abacus and during this analysis execution if there are some errors it will print under this arrest list any warnings it will be provided here okay then you have got the output file database data file etc here now it also provides you the status right now you can see that the status analysis is completed and you can also read the progress of the job uh, looking into the message even in the message area so for example, here you can see that analysis input file processor completed successfully, a backup standard completed successfully, okay? And the job is also completed successfully. It does mean that the analysis is complete. Now let us start reviewing the results. So what you need to do is, you have to just go to the results option, okay? And under the results, uh, you will be able to exp uh, see the, the variation of the uh, different uh, field output variables. So this is uh, how the screen looks like okay in the visualization module remember that visualization module is a, some, one of the last module in that module list and uh, where it is the area where you can do the post processing so now uh, let us start uh, looking some of the components of this uh, screen so before that let me do one thing okay fine so now if you see this viewport in this area there are many components and uh, maybe that uh, in some cases you want to you don't want to have this compass or that pirate etc etc and you want to um, change the way in which you know your legend box or your title box etc looks like and this can be done uh, straight away through that uh, what you can do is you can go to the viewport annotation options okay there's a viewport annotation options so just press it and here you will find that there are many you know parameters which you can change in order to uh, make you know the viewport acceptable or comfortable for your use suppose that uh, you are not interested in the compass so you can just press this uncheck this and apply okay you will find that the compass is off now it is not there in the viewport so you can again make it on okay now suppose you are not interested in the triad you can just press this untick it and then apply you can see that okay it is gone the triad is not there now coming to the legend so so this is what we call as the legend it provides you okay the values of the output variable okay along with the corresponding color representation so this is what we call as the legend okay so if you apply this i don't want the legend suppose you will find that this this legend box is altogether gone so let us keep it okay and now coming to the title box what is this title box so here for example here you can see that yes it provides you the name of the model data output database file when it is created and all okay and the increment etc so this is this area is the title block area so if you just unclick it apply you'll find that yes there's a title box is not not there in the viewport now now also there is one state so this part is known as the state block okay for example it says that the results presented here corresponds to the uh, time step of 1.0 okay suppose that i don't want the state block also here you can unclick it apply so you'll find that there is no uh, what we call as the state block okay so means that also you can uh, allow uh, any text or annotation arrows presented here to view or not so this is how you can make you know the viewport you can arrange your viewport and include only those components which you want okay so so let me keep like that and at the same time what you can also do is that you can also adjust the font sizes etc 
for example if you go to the legend you can see that you can adjust the color set a font etc the same is applicable for the title block and the state block so using this viewport annotation option you will be able to change the way in which you know the viewport you can make it much more comfortable as per your requirement okay now what we can do is so that's all regarding the viewport annotation manager now now here there is uh, this is basically the toolbox that is associated with the visualization module so for example the first one you can see that uh, is a plot undeformed shape you know that this is a, okay so you can see that this is an undeformed shape and this is a deformed shape now let us start inspecting the various variables or the various field outputs so let me just go to Okay, fine. So now, look here. So now let us start seeing how the shear force diagram looks like. So I will select from this variable and for CSO2, right, and press it. So this is how the shear force varies. Look here. So you can say that. Just a minute. Okay, so the first thing is that you can see that the shear force is plotted on a deformed shape, right? Uh, it is better that we plot it on an undeformed shape. So if you go to this uh, tool, you can see that here it is written port contours on deformed shape. So at the edge, you will find that a small triangle. So what you do is that you click the left of your uh, mouse pad, okay, or your mouse, and then select this button that is a, which allows you to plot the contours on undeformed shape. Select it. Now you can see that. So this is the shear force diagram. Obviously, you know that we have applied a triangular load. So we expect a second order variation. Yes, it's a second order variation. Now, looking into this particular legend box, we find that on this edge, okay, so the uh, shear force value, it varies from 19.5 to 10. Now, if you remember the total load applied was a, a half into six into 20, that's equal to 30. So it means that to one end, that is to this end, we expect say uh, 20 kN and to the other end, we expect say 10 kN. This is what is being shown here. So this end, we have got a 10 kN, which is represented by this uh, blue color, 9.997, that is a 10 kN. And on the other side, we have got 19.5. There is a small difference, okay? It could be due to the machine. Now, in many cases, we are also interested because we may find it reading the variation a little bit uncomfortable. So here there is a very useful tool which you can always use in any abacus post processing. For example, what you have to do is you have to go to the tools, okay? Then you go to the query. This is a very important part. Okay, in query there is something you call as visualization module queries. Okay, so these are the general queries. These are the queries that is very specific to the visualization module. So you go go to the double click probe values. Now look here. Here there is now here appears the pro values dialog. Okay, fine. Now what we can do is let me just do it a little bit smaller so that we can easily. Okay, I think that is good enough. Now what does the pro value shows you? So as you move your mouse across, now look here. Look into how the variation of the shear force takes place. So you, you move your cursor, okay? So I'm moving my cursor along the beam, you can see, okay? So you will find that in this particular box, pro values, okay? The values of the variables changes. For example, the origin coordinates and all those things, it changes, okay? So you'll find that at one end, at this end, you're having a shear force of 19.5 and on this end, you're having a shear force of 9.997, okay? It is very clear here. Suppose you are interested in finding an approximate location where the shear force is zero. So you just look into this. When it reaches the zero, you just look, locate the coordinate. For example, I'm just moving, okay? I'm finding, yes, it's almost, yes, this location, I'm finding that it is uh, minus 0.36. So I find that approximately, see the origin is 3.4 meters. So approximately 3.4 location, my shear force is zero, which means that the baby moment will be maximum at this location. So this uh, plot, uh, the probe values is a very useful tool for the users in order to get the variations, okay. 
So that's all regarding uh, the shear force diagram. Now regarding the bending moment, obviously we know that it is the bending moment corresponds to the sixth one, that is the N4 CSO6. So look here, this is how the bending moment diagram is. Okay, and we have plotted it on an undeformed shape. Now this is the variation of the bending moment diagram. Now looking into the legend box, you can see that the red corresponds to the zero. And at this location, it is almost blue, right? So you can see that this is a blue color. And it, this corresponds to 23.9 kilo newton meter. So this is the maximum bending moment that we have seen here. Okay, so obviously you know that as we applied a triangle load, the variation is cubic. And obviously the maximum value you expect somewhere around 3.4 or 3.5 and that's equal to 23.09 kN meter. And just like we did in the shear force diagram, you can quickly go to the uh, tools and go to the query and go to the prop values. Okay, so you get this uh, label. Okay, so you can just move your, uh, okay, you can just move your uh, mouse along this beam. Okay, and you'll find that the, how the and for CSO6, that's the bending moment variation takes place. So we find that yes, around say 3.4, 3.5, we are getting the maximum bending moment as we have already concluded from the, our shear force diagram. So this is all regarding uh, our uh, bending moment diagram. Here there is also one more interesting variable that uh, that is already provided by back as that's a U. U means it's a deformation, okay? And in the deformation, we are interested. Uh, in the U2, that is the deformation in the two direction, that is in the y direction, you can plot it. Okay, fine. So here we observe from our legend box that the maximum deflection which corresponds to the blue color, it is 1.271 in degrees to minus 2 meters, that is 82.71 millimeters. So I would request all the users to make their hand calculations and ensure that all the values reported here are matching with the hand calculations. Because the main problem is that in Abacus, it's a general purpose software, if you make any minor Okay, errors or mistakes in the modeling or in the input variables, it is likely to affect or drastically affect the results. And this is true where the machine is also very important, right? So in Abacus, you need to have an approximate idea of what must be the end result, okay? So that, that, that gives a lot of confidence to you, okay? So this is all regarding the way in which the deformation changes. Now in many cases, what happens, Abacus users are also interested in exporting all these values to some other application. For example, suppose that you want to plot a shear force diagram or a minimum diagram in your uh, Excel. So what you can do is that here you can make use of the so-called XY plot data, create XY data. So if you press this XY data, okay, there are many options. So here what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the path, okay, I want all the variables, all these uh, variables like the minimum moment, the shear force, etc. To be plotted along a path which I will describe. Okay, so, so for that, first of all, you have to create the path. So, what you can do is that to create the path, again, uh, goes to the tools. In the tool, you can say that there is an item called path, and the path you create. Okay, so now that, let me say that this is path. I say that path B. Okay, fine. And I want to have the node list, means that I will uh, create the path through a set of nodes so you can continue now you can fill the fill out the you know what are the node labels so for example if i select from here so node labels okay so you can just select it so for example i want it to be from say 1 to my node labels it goes up to 61 okay that is good enough okay so you'll find that yes the path is already set from 1 to 61. Now suppose you are interested in obtaining the nodes that also you can have it from the tools query box. So you can go to the nodes, okay, and select a node. Okay, so this is my first node. Okay, so you can say that this is my node one and these are the coordinates. And suppose you want to find out what is the end node. This is my node. So you can say that the end node is 61, right? So means that from 1 to 61, we have Okay, declared our node list for the path definition. Now, having declared that path, what we can do is we can directly go to the XY, create XY data. The path is already available to us. Now you can just continue it. And then our path is path beam. Okay, 
Now suppose you are interested in, so here you, there are many things you can, uh, for obtaining the data at the path points, which you have specified right now, you can see that this is my path. When you select the path beam, this path includes a list of nodes, which starts from 1 to 61. Okay. Now you can also get to obtain the data at uniform spacing also. And the x values are, you can just select, I want to, obviously my x values being the x distance from the origin. And now, next one is that which field output, suppose you are interested in the shear force. Okay, so what we can do is that you can select field, go to the field output, if you are interested in the shear force, that is a N4 CSO2, so you can say that apply. Okay, okay, you can say, okay that's good enough. And you can just plot it. Okay, so look here, this is how you get a good part of the shear force diagram. Obviously, you know that the shear force diagram is a second order variable and look into the origin of this. That is very important. Don't get confused. Okay, so this is the zero value. So along the y-axis, the shear force zero value is here. On the left hand, we find that as expected, the shear force is a one third of or the total load 30 kilometer. That is a ton. And on the other end, it is a 20 kilometer. Okay, so this is the shear force diagram. Now suppose you are interested in taking okay, this particular uh, uh, variation okay, to an excel file. So we are just plotted it. So if you want to take it to the excel file, what you can do is, you can again go to the plugins here. In the plugins, uh, you can select the tools and take the excel utilities. Okay, And in the excel utilities, here you will find that the object is xy data. I want to take this xy data from Abacus to Abacus to excel. So Right now, I have created an XY plot which is named as TUMB1, which provides me the variation of the shear force diagram. Okay, fine. So I can select it, TUMB1 here, apply. Okay, so you'll find that now some operation is going on within Abacus. So you'll find that after this operation, yes, look here. It has provided you the Excel file. Okay, so on the X on the first column, the first column, you'll find that it contains all the x axis distances from the origin. Okay, you will find that obviously it starts from 0 to 0 to 6. Okay, and uh, here you can find that this indicates all the shear force values. Okay, at x is equal to 0, the shear force is minus 10. And you can see that, for example, at x is equal to 6, okay, the shear force is 19.5. Okay, now, okay, if you are not comfortable with this uh, sketch, obviously what you can do is that we can just delete it and you can just insert, okay? And under insert, you can go to the graph option. You can select any one of this thing. And what you can do is that you can select the data, okay? You can select the data and uh, uh, you can just uh, call add, okay? So add, so you can see that the series name for example you can say that this is the shear shear force diagram as of d you can type and the x values you can select x values for example these are my x values you can just select it it hardly takes any time okay up to six you have to select okay so that's good enough okay and uh, if we go to the y value obviously my value is my the shear force diagram the shear force values so we can just uh, uh, select it Okay, good enough. You have selected it. Okay, so now we'll be fine. So, okay, so, so look here. So, this is our, the way in which the shear force diagram is. Okay, fine. So, you can, as you can see, that this is a much far better diagram that, than presented by Abacus. So, here you will find that at this end the shear force is minus 10, and at this end is almost 20. And this diagram also looks okay, very good. So this is how you can, uh, you know, export the data obtained from the backers directly to the uh, Excel and make a good plots. And these plots will be use, useful uh, if you are interested in writing a paper or in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the preparation of your thesis, etc. Okay, fine, that's good enough. So this is how you can make any kind of the data. For example, suppose that you are interested in making uh, the, the belly bone diagram, XY data, path is already created. Okay, the path, my path is path beam. You can select the field output, go to my N4606, apply, okay. 
So you can just plot it. So look here in the back, you get the minimum diagram plotted. If you are not, in, if you want to export this to the Excel, you can directly export as I mentioned earlier. So this is how you uh, make use of the various uh, tools in a uh, visualization module in order to have a better interpretation of your result. Okay. So I think that uh, there are many more parameters available here in the toolbox. Obviously, we'll go through this in the next uh, tutorial. So I think that uh, it's the right time to close the part B. So that's all. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.